I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Everybody, welcome back to the Combat Sports UK MMA podcast with Taylor Collard here. I'm delighted to be joined once again by our Canadian brother, John Boguslavsky. John, how are you, mate? How's things going over the other side of the pond, so to speak? Going good, going good. Um, saw the tickets for UC Toronto. A little stressed out about that, but uh, other than that, fun UC card yesterday. Octagon was fun, I heard, yesterday as well. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be, um, you're going to need to take out probably quite a, a reasonable sized loan to be going to Toronto if yeah, you want to go as a fan, right? Ooh. A couple of loans, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, I thought we thought we were getting screwed here in, in London last July. I think we were just talking off, off, off camera that the, the price is there about 500 euros. So that's about 450 pounds uh, for nosebleeds, right? Nosebleeds, worst nosebleeds, very tough. Wow, very tough. You get I think in a couple more hundreds. And I think in London last July it was about three fifty, three hundred for nosebleeds. So yeah, you're talking about one hundred and fifty pounds increase on that, which is ridiculous. Which is ridiculous. But hey, you were saying to me also they're pretty much sold out, right? Uh Pretty much also other couple of seats together here and there. Um, but expensive. And then we have Ticketmaster here, which adds additional fees, another $90 fees to it. So it's just ridiculous. Hopefully, I could get the tickets closer Hopefully. to the date and somebody's just what, can't reselling. Go and them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So as, as you said, I was at um, Octagon in uh, Cologne last night an incredible event we'll touch on that after after the ufc but you're gonna have to put up with me because i'm absolutely exhausted um from the evening but an incredible evening nonetheless um in terms of the ufc i kind of caught bits and pieces of it how did you consume the card did you manage to see everything or bits and pieces how was it for you yeah bits and pieces some fights i watched some fights i had to work so i couldn't um overall good fight good good card a um, lot of finishes, a lot of finish for an apex, for apex fight, especially main card, all finishes except for one. Um, and to me, that one decision was actually a probably Friday night. It was back and forth. It was my Michael Morale, Morales and Jake Matthews. Mm-hmm. I like both guys. Uh, the night started controversial, kind of, with the Mike mm-hmm. Beltron mess up there. Overall, fun, fun card. It was, uh, wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, quite a lot, quite a lot to unpack there. Let's um, let's start right at the top of that card. I kind of caught the back end of this fight just after the um, post fight press conference in Cologne, and we were watching it on Patrick's Patrick's phone. Shout out to Patrick McCorry. Me and him were down there last night, um, and yeah, we saw we kind of jumped into it midway through the first round where Paul was on his back and just looked like Brendan Brendan was was holding him down. Is that generally how? The fight went up until the finish, or were we kind of missing bits and pieces of it? it was, yeah, that was kind of just a bit as all fights, they start on the feet. Um, it was kind of some feints, some little jabs going on. Eventually, there was one nice striking exchange halfway through the first or halfway through the second where Craig got most of the, the damage landed on him. And then eventually... Um, Push to the push to the cage, trying to see who which man can get the other man take down first. Night there was a really nice, beautiful grappling stage where Craig went for a calf slicer and then Allen reversed him with a calf, calf slicer in oh. his own. Some heel hooks. It was really nice grappling exchange, yeah, for all the jujitsu practitioners who like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that. I believe that was in the second round, third round started the same way on their feet. Kind of didn't want to throw much. Although I think Allen landed the bigger, bigger shots there, got mm-hmm. the takedown eventually. It seemed a bit too much for Craig at the time, and uh, eventually got the, the submission win. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for Craig, man. I mean, obviously coming from a British, British perspective, it's really frustrating because he looked good up against um, Unis, even better on the feet actually yeah. as well. Like in, in, in that fight, it looked like he'd improved a lot and. 
um, from what I was kind of reading online and the, the observations we were able to see as we were kind of traveling back to our hotel yesterday, it looked like Craig was, I don't want to say out of his depth, but it looked like he was really struggling with, with the stand up of Adam. Like he looked pretty beat up towards, towards the end of that fight. And it looked like Alan had the size and, and strength advantage and also the, um, yeah, the advances in most parts, apart from that grappling exchange that you mentioned. Um, so yeah, a real, a real rough one for yeah. Craig. I mean, what, what was, what was the vibe kind of across there? Was it kind of the, um, yeah, Brendan Allen was just brilliant or that Paul Craig kind of slipped up a little bit. Like you mentioned earlier, um, I did, I liked Paul versus Muniz. Mm -hmm. Muniz was just a, just, just Jack middleweight and he looked good on, he looked good with him. So, uh, grappling wise, striking wise. So I had hopes for him coming in with, versus Allen. But Allen did seem a bit too much for him. He he was Allen's a tall middleweight, so I think that gave problems for Craig, and he matched him for strike to strike, strike for strike, and grappling for grappling. Allen was just uh, one step ahead. Uh, you know, Craig always liked to invite people to to his guard, but Allen knew exactly. He seemed he was prepared for Craig's guard. Was aware of everything. Every time Craig threw something. Allen with uh Allen would reply with something. And he he just seemed a bit it just seemed a bit much for him. It seemed like he he Allen does deserve to be in a top ten middleweight and Craig was just a step behind. I don't know if it was um lack of preparedness or anything, but it seemed Allen was a bit too much for him, either striking or grappling. Yeah, a bit of the narrative over here was that Paul Craig kind of vibes off the crowd and kind of gets himself G'd up for that. And, you know, he'd only been in the um, in the Apex once before, similarly to Alan, actually. Alan also had only been in there once before. So, yeah, really weird performance, it sounded like, from reading kind of uh, Twitter and things like that. It seemed like a really, really weird performance. I mean, where do you want to see Brendan Allen go next? What do you think his, his ceiling of middleweight might be after after this victory? I'll I'll definitely like to see him fight somebody five to ten. Yeah. Um, I don't know. A Joker might be might be cool. Dolice, I would like to see that fight. Dolice is also a good grappler. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, heck, throw him in with Marvin Vittori. See what he can do. Marvin yeah. Vittori is uh, I believe is in the top five, so could be a tougher fight. But I think they're all fun fights because uh, he's a tall, tall, lanky guy. He could strike. He could do grappling really well too. Uh yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Delice. Delice, I feel like I don't know if he has a fight lined up. Mm, I think I know Alan just fought last night. Yeah, I think oh, he does. Yeah, I think Delice does. I mean, he's um, he's I think he's got a fight lined up maybe towards the end of the year or something like that, or it maybe just fell off because I think it was due to be on that Shanghai card, which seems to be um, oh, yeah, seems to be kind of up in the air. Like it seems to have been switched to the apex. But I yeah, I mean. I agree. I, th I think him and Delito would be a really great fight. Um, I'd like to see him against Vittori as well, because I actually think Delizze, when he fought Vittori in London, I think Delizze beat, in my opinion, I think Delizze beat Vittori. So I'd really like to see Brendan Allen yeah. up, up against Vittori. And I think Allen would give a lot of problems to somebody like a Jared Cannonier as well. If I'm Jared Cannonier, I don't want that fight um, at all. I think he's got the youth advantage, speed, power, um, I don't like that at all for Cannonier. Otherwise, you're looking at maybe, I mean, if you go even higher, Rob Whitaker. Um, but that, I think, is too low That's for a bit Rob. Too high. Yeah, uh, I don't, Rob I don't think fight. Rob's going to take that. that. I like that. I like that shout. You know, maybe put Paolo Costa's also also an option up there. But I mean, who knows with that guy? Um, <laughs> so it's exciting I'll for him, actually. Yeah, he has, he, has, um, he has great opportunities. You know, he fought someone outside of top 10. So now I think he deserves someone's inside of top 10. Yeah. Um, work his way up. I could see him. He could. He could, he, he has a five five fight winning streak, so he could definitely climb up. You know, two or three more fights, he could get that rematch versus Strickland. Yeah, yeah, he totally Whatever. could. He totally could. And um, the co-main event, Michael Morales. You you mentioned him right right at the beginning. Somebody that that jumped out. He's gone up now to sixteen and zero after getting yeah. unanimous decision over Jake Matthews. Um, I haven't seen anything of this fight, so we're completely relying on your knowledge here. How was that fight? Uh, to me, it was fight of the night. Uh, almost, if I can remember correctly, all stand up. Michael Morales is a sniper. Mm -hmm. He and he's creative. He 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 
He's a good. He's a good prospect. He's definitely someone I could see in the world to wear top ten and, and within two fights. Wow. I also like. Yeah, I also like Jake Matthews. Matthews, I believe, he's good. He he's a very durable guy. As Dana's favorite word, though, mm-hmm. durable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Malcolm Morales is a good prospect. Uh, he he beat Max Griffin last last fight by yep. decision as well. Um. Definitely came in streaking. He was he had a he was he had was knocking out people when he first came in. His last two fights was decision, but it was it was dominant decisions. Uh, undefeated, Ecuadorian. Um, he he looks good. He feels good. He's a really good fighter. I feel. Uh, like I said, top ten soon. I he could definitely challenge the welterweight division. He's like in the likes of uh Shafkat, Brady. Mm-hmm. All those, all those uh, top prospects on the field for Jack Dylan and Lena, they'll be they'll be an incredible mm-hmm. fight. I could see. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, is, is Nicholas Dalby the next fight to make? Both both coming off a win. Um, you kind of throw Dalby to another um, undefeated undefeated prospect and seeing seeing what he can do. Um, I, you know, I think that could be the fight to make. Could be. And it, it lines up. It lines up. Dalby fought uh, yeah, two three weeks ago now, and he. He, he the, well, the Bonafine brothers is kind of a disappointing. So, but he got the finish. He got he Dobby got the finish over Bonafine. I I could see that. Yeah, Dobby definitely deserves a big fight like Morales. And yeah. if Dobby wins, he does deserve that to be that top fight for a top fifteen rank. Yeah, because as, as, as I remember, as I remember, Dobby did he? I don't think he called anybody out on the back of that fight in Brazil, did he? So it's um, kind of left left the door open a little bit. Um, yeah, I think. I think Dalby probably deserves to fight somebody ranked, um, but this Michael Morales fight does does tickle the juices. It does, it does, it does yeah. sound good. Like it sounds like a lot of fun. Like you said, it, it lines up, um, and I think Dalby is the kind of guy who would take it. Um, you know, especially after killing that hype train. Dalby's on what, what four fight win streak now, so his confidence is Dalby's, gonna be high. Dalby is an impressive fighter as well. He, I think, he only has two losses in his career, and he he knows how to fight. He knows how to fight, mm-hmm. and uh, Malcolm Morales got. He's only twenty four as well. That that's mm-hmm. what's impressive. He's he's very young, and he's he's just about to hit his the prime, his prime, yeah. his body prime. So he that'll be a good veteran. He'll definitely have a good. It's a good matchup. It's a good matchup. Yeah. Just, that'll be. I mean, across acro- across that because we've kind of seen him go to this decision now. So we've seen him grow the full fifteen minutes. Did you see any? Any, I don't want to say weaknesses, but any areas that Dalby or somebody else could take advantage of with Michael Morales, or did he look pretty good in, in every area? Um, he definitely, definitely could take advantage of uh, Morales. I think I didn't see grappling much, but definitely, uh, you know, anybody who could get your both hands cupped, cusped around uh, around his waist could definitely take him down. Mm-hmm. He he liked throwing that uh, flying knee. Mm-hmm. Morales did so I feel like if he catched out he could definitely take him down I don't believe I saw him a lot on his on his back see how how he does there his head does he doesn't bob and weave his head does stay in a straight line sometimes mm-hmm. he tried he tries to dodge last second and do a counter yeah. a lot of times I feel like if so you catch somebody with fast hands with good combinations you could definitely get caught again that could be any fighter but that's from a uh, a quick, quick view of Morales. Mm, interesting, interesting. Another, another young guy who's kind of putting together a little bit of a run now is um, Chase Hooper. Um, yeah, I saw the result of this one, and I kind of, I thought it might go this way. You know, I thought it might go to the grappling, and Chase, Chase is so slick, man. When it comes to the grappling, like yeah, he's like he's kind of like a, a skinny little nerdy kid. Reminds me kind of like. Short, what Sean O'Malley first looked like when he came into the UFC, yeah. like yeah, physically, yeah. obviously not fighting style, but physically. Um, and yeah, I mean, how was his performance? How did he look against Jordan? Uh, really good. Jordan had a he tweeted out after the, the fight something funny. He's like, I guess the um, I guess the sports book were correct because he mm-hmm. Chase Hooper was like a big favorite by submission, and then Jordan Jordan is also a uh, submission, yeah, sub- by submission fight, ace yeah. as well. So yeah, I the the uh fight Jordan actually took Chase down as soon as mm-hmm. it went down, game over for Jordan. Wow. Yeah, he reversed it, got on top, 
uh, started throwing a little bit of strikes. Eventually got into his position and got the got the choke got the choke in. Yeah, Hooper looked impressive. He looked bigger than Jordan, I would say. Mm, He's definitely taller, but he also looked he looked bigger than him. He looked like he put got a few pounds of muscles on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked a bit more ripped than uh, we first saw him. Obviously, when he was eighteen in featherweight, mm-hmm. he literally put some muscle on and uh, looked very impressive. First round submission versus another another grappling guy mm-hmm. always looks good, and that was a quick submission. It was like as soon as as soon as Jordan got taken down, uh, Chase got taken down, and he reversed it right away. Like, yeah, that's it. Okay. And I'm, like I was thinking off the back of that, you know what would be a fun fight is him and Paddy the Batty. Chase Hooper and Paddy oh, Taylor yeah. would be a really fun fight. So hopefully, hopefully Chase can can continue building building his name and Paddy can come through Tony. Or maybe not actually. It might be better if, if Paddy takes a loss to pick up the Chase fight. I don't know. But um, I, w- I would love to see that fight. I think that would be a lot of fun for as long as it would last. Well, I'm a Tony fan. So I, <laughs> sorry for the people are across the pond. I hope. Tony gets gets the win there, but I I don't know Chase Hooper has good jujitsu, and yeah. he's very lanky six one I believe six six feet or six six one for the division. Yeah, I just thought top of my head, people in the top fifteen. I don't know if like top fifteen to so 13, 14, 15. I'm not quite sure who it is, but I don't think they have better jujitsu than Chase. Mm-hmm. And people like uh, Gamrot or Tarukian. We're obviously in the top ten and top five. They're kind of shorter and they're yeah. more uh, wrestling heavy. So if, it could be could, it could be some fun matchups versus uh, wrestler versus uh, jujitsu, and see if Hooper could gain some more muscle as he looked like he has been doing that, and try to get a top fifteen, get some some finishes and for his gap grappling. So mm. it could be interesting. Yeah, that would be that would that would be sick. Could be could be a fun career for him. So. Where do you want to jump to next for the for the rest of the car before we chat about my experiences over in uh, in Octagon, um, in Cologne? I saw the Amanda Hibas. I saw the spinning, the spinning wheel kick. Oof, that looked, that was good. And apparently, from what from what I saw, what people were saying was that she'd been throwing it to the body, and then when you yeah. actually when I saw the replay, you just see the girl's hands just drop. Um, you see Lu- Luana's hands just drop, and then poof, straight in the face. She threw the first, uh, he bust through the first time in the first round. And I think, uh, she noticed that. And then the, I, I think in Vance, she back, went back to the corner. The co- her coach told her, throw it more, throw it more. Yeah. And, uh, she, cause she looked, um, not impressive in the first round. Mm-hmm. And she was catching up. She had to do some catch ups. And my goodness. Yeah. That was a, what a finish. That was great. That was good. Yeah. She caught her. She she planned it. She knew what she was gonna do, and uh, she got it. She was she looked good. Uh, in the third round, she looked good. Yeah, and she um, Pihero is kind of coming in where Hebas was a couple of years ago, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think she was eleven and one, um, and only had one other loss. And then, yeah, for Hebas to come in and do that, that's that's a big statement from her. Um, anything else from you? What what else stood out from you for the card? Um, I can mention. Uh... Let me just see his name. Muktubek Orobai. Oro- mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He was on four days notice. He, four days. Four days notice. Yeah. He is spo- He and he's on. He got the main card. He fought Euros Medic, who's all. Uh-huh. He's a uh, also a good welterweight. Um, kind of a little bit of hype behind him from also from Kyrgyzstan, which is where Valentina Shevchenko is. Yeah. Um, a lot of wrestling, but I think Medic. Did not look good. He got worn out, and eventually, it wasn't even a. It was kind of a neck crank. He, mm. you could see his his the for the the choke. His neck was here. His face was somewhere else. Oh, so he dude. had to tap to that. Yeah, it was a nasty, nasty finish. Um, he, the only thing I could say about I, could, I would like to change about Muktubek is maybe throw more strikes when mm-hmm. you're grappling. Mm-hmm. Um. Because then he would have gotten probably because that's when he got when he starts striking that's when he got the submission, um. And uh, Christian Leroy Duncan, yeah, I have to mention him. Very impressive. I like that was the first time I think I watched him fight. I liked liked him. 
Second round, he just took over and he's like, you know what? I'll get this done. Um, Mick Parkwin, still undefeated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we had an interview with him recently, I saw. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of a slugger fight, two big heavyweights just slugging it out. Yeah. Uh, but he got the he got the decision. He got he got the nod. He did what he had to do. Yeah, I yeah. saw um a bit of commentary from uh, Dominic Cruz going at Paul Felder. <laughs> he was like, Paul Felder said something like, "Yeah, these guys are bound to be exhausted for going at this pace." And Dominic Cruz just goes, "What pace?" <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it, it was it was a slugger. It was a slugger. He they were kind of making fun of him, but you know they're both um, Felder and Cruz are both. Uh, like when Batman weight, I don't. I want to see them carry around two hundred sixty pounds, <laughs> and see if you could go uh, fifty minutes in the in the desert. What what is via Las Vegas? So yeah, yeah. Super super happy for um for a friend of combat sports UK, Mick Mick Parkin. You know we've had a couple of interviews with him. Obviously ahead of his debut earlier this year, and he was phenomenal um in that performance. I'm really really happy to see him pick up pick up the um, unanimous decision win here. Probably getting a bit you know a bit more octagon time. You know going going three rounds. Um, getting used to getting used to the travel also and fighting in the apex um, and stuff yeah. like that. So great, obviously Christian Leroy Duncan. I mean, I saw the elbows. Oh, oh they were Ooh, just not, the elbows. Yeah, they were not nice. Yeah, the elbows, man. They they were not pretty at all. Um, and yeah, Dennis just wow. yeah, he is exciting. Christian Leroy Duncan, really really exciting. Um, as is his name say, I often get the two confused. I get Christian Leroy Duncan and Chris Duncan. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because there's two of them with with this with the same name, but they're both super exciting. So it's a really really good to see that a fun a fun card overall. A fun card overall. It fun card, like, yeah. Yeah, we'll try. It was and underrated. Catch up on... Underrated card, you know. When you see, uh, mm-hmm. it was I would say it wasn't for the casuals. Because yeah. you would look at the card, you'd be like, oh, there's no nobody you'd quite know. Maybe you know, you know, Craig. You yeah. might have heard of uh, Chase Hooper and Jordan Leavitt because he fought mm-hmm. Patty. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was an underrated card. A lot of finishes, like I said, main card, all finishes except for Michael Morales. But that was a fun fight to watch. Uh, prelims had three decisions and mm-hmm. one no contest. That was no Not contest. Bad. Was uh, yeah, yes, it was really good. Mike it was really Beltran. fun. Mike Beltran. Mike Beltran, right? Beltran if uh, not much to talk about that. It was more big mistake by Mike. Yeah. Um. He, he he! I like Mike. He's usually a good referee. I don't know why he, he went to go stop the fight. He kept talking to the fighter. I don't know if the fighter was responding verbally, but he was mm. moving in, in um the choke. He had a who was it? The the other guy had him in a body triangle, and had had the hooks in. Had the sorry, he had a body triangle and had the 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 arms in for the choke but he was still moving around trying to get some air here and there and trying to get to the end of the round yeah mike was just a bit quick to the gun weird 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 decision so yeah fun a fun one obviously no no ufc now for for a couple of weeks a bit of a rest next weekend but then it's going into austin and then obviously we're rolling yeah. straight into um 296 which is obviously oh, yeah. a ridiculous pay-per-view um so yeah i mean i'll just go, I'll kind of wax lyrical a little bit about uh, octagon the experience last night with my fourth event now with octagon um nice. like we were saying off, off camera before i don't know how you guys over there will be able to view it i think usually octagon.tv they usually sell the pay-per-view on their website it's about 10 pounds i think they usually sell them for so not not a huge amount of money if you can if you can afford it i highly 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 recommend it especially the next couple of cards uh, octagon mm-hmm. uh, 50 and 51 there's some really stacked fights on there um, a lot of you know i think andreas michaelidis is fighting on 51 he's a former ufc ufc fighter famous for getting ko'd by uh, alex Pereira. <laughs> unfortunately um, yeah but there's some really really good fights probably one of the best fighters outside the ufc is fighting as well on 50 um which is uh Keita. he's fighting um Another friend of combat sports uk nico samsonita i'm going to speak to nico ne- next weekend ahead of that title fight so that'll be a super fun fight. Um, but as for the fight in Cologne, we had three Brits on the card, um, starting with Jake McHugh. Jake McHugh came in and made his professional debut off the back of Octagon Challenge. Um, and he looked really, he looked good, man. He looked, he looked big. He looked big for the division. He was up against an 0-2 guy, so you kind of expect he's going to come in there and probably pick up the victory, but put in a really nice 
flick submission in the second round. Um, and that, I mean, he won his professional debut. Unfortunately, there was a Canadian on the card, um, Steve McDonald. Unfortunately, so. unfortunately, he uh, he lost. <laughs> unfortunately, so, he lost. Uh, yes, okay. unfortunately, he lost. So I, I felt I felt for you there. Um, he lost to Jorik Montagnac, a, a French a French guy. So sorry, Steve. And he was that that was actually his first professional loss. He was four and zero going into that. I mean, you got to hate oh. making that trip, and then and then picking up a loss. So. Do you get so finished? No, decision. Unanimous decision. decision. Yeah, that's experience. A... That's, that's experience yeah. around there. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they keep him on and um, it was a competitive fight. It was it wasn't a it wasn't a rollover, so um okay. but yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately for him, he picked up the loss. And then we had Matthew Bonner uh, coming across from Cage Warriors, making his octagon debut as well, um, uh, fighting glory kickboxer uh Chihad Akipa, who's undefeated in MMA. Um, he picked up the win, a very grindy um, decision win. Um, he kind of, it was weird. They kind of swapped places. The grappler became the striker and the striker became the grappler. It was really weird. It was really weird isn't to it watch. Isn't it interesting how that happens sometimes in, yeah. uh, in MMA? Yeah. yeah, it was odd. It was odd. And then, um, and then, yeah, we got interviews with Matthew and with Jake, obviously, coming up on the channel today. And that brings me to Corey Fry, performance of the night. Dude, if you can, if you can go and watch this guy fight, oh my goodness, his fights are fun, man. His fights are fun. Like it was back and forth for about a minute and a half of the first round, like heavy, heavy shots from Dennis Ilbay. Ilbay got the pop of the night in the stadium, um, in the arena. Really, really popular German fighter from Cologne as well. So he was, you know, hot favorite going in there. Corey got booed big time. You know, twenty thousand people just booing him. Um, and then he got a takedown, some really slick transitions, jiu-jitsu transitions, and then eventually caught him in an arm bar. But Corey told me after the fight, he said he heard it snap about three times um, oh. before the ref actually stopped it. And then afterwards, yeah, Dennis was in the post-fight press conference with just a massive pack of ice on his arm, and he just couldn't even use it. Like, it was, it was rough. It was rough. As brutal um, as that is, I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to see that. Yeah, it was, it was. I mean, Octagon will probably put it up on their YouTube channel in a week or so, maybe. So try and find that. Corey Fry versus Denny, Denny Zilbay. Um, that fight one performance of the night for Corey. So he nice. got the uh, he got the bonus. Octagon tends to only give out one bonus. So Corey was, Corey was the one to get it. And then in the main event, they uh, had the vacant heavyweight title. Honestly, not much to write home about with this event, uh, with this fight. It came after Christian Eckerlin, who is a German vet, and he again took the roof off the place, so the adrenaline in the arena kind of dropped. Um, oh, really? Hatif, yeah. Hatif Moel picked up the win over Lazar Todev um, in a really a back-and-forth slugfest. Um, wasn't wasn't an incredible fight, um, oh. but was was pretty decent. Uh, I just look up the, the pictures. He has the a huge welt under his right eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was saying in the press conference it was an eye poke. They went back and forth oh, in the press eye conference, poke. which is quite entertaining. But um, I don't know if an eye poke does that big of a welt. Yeah, I know. That's what he was saying. So I don't know. Maybe he was just playing it down. So, so that was it. I mean, again, I I banged the drum for Octagon. Um, if you can, you know, if you're European based and you can get to an event, do it because their production is UFC level production, and they fill out these massive stadiums, especially in Germany. Um, and then if not, Optagon.tv to, to give them a watch. The next few cards will be really, really good. So that brings us to the end. John, time has, time has flown. Thank you very much for the pleasure of your company and for watching the fights and, and not making me look like a fool. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, sounds like the Octagon, I should, start, I should start watching that as well. Yeah, start to pay attention, man. It's good. All right, man. Take care, buddy. Take care as well. See ya.